All right, so as you can tell, we kind of just already uh, pre-sectioned our, our models here. Three diverse different looks. Uh, so one thing I always like to start with is the grooming spray, just to uh, use as a cutting agent. Just helps me get a little bit of grip on the hair. So I always like to give all my uh, scissor cuts a little bit of a spritz with that. So I'm about to take about, last time he got a haircut was about two months ago. So I'm, I'm kind of blind guessing what two months worth of length is. And just go ahead and just reset him at that length, choosing my overall choice of length before I start to work my layers. Bearing in mind that his hair is kind of wavy and curly, so once we dry it, what's gonna happen to the hair? It's gonna kind of jump up, right? Um, cutting wet allows us to kind of build our roadmap to follow, right? Whilst when we cut dry, we kind of define and put our signature touch and see instantaneous results. So that'll be my cutting line. I'm gonna cut square, right? So I'm just gonna cut towards that invisible wall, pulling everything to my square line. As you can see, it's already been kind of pre-cut around these areas, so there's not a lot I could do with it. I could go down and tape it at all, but I love going further into the hairline and I don't wanna do that, so. I'm probably gonna leave most of them a uh, little bit of hair around the perimeter and just kind of personalize that and then texturize it a little bit at the end. A lot of this weight's gonna stay, texturize that again, and then I'm gonna kind of over direct it and bring it over to the, to the side. Um, yeah, keep that, that back heavy. Now I'm connecting into the beard a little bit. Um, so same thing, now you're doing in reverse. Um, depending on the person's face, like, for his, I liked it to have a little bit more of a width to it, so I blend this top lightly and it helps to kind of stretch the shape versus keeping it close to his natural. It would keep it too, too for me, style-wise, a little too thin, so I'm gonna stretch it out by blending that top line. And anytime I work with blending, is I always do it in a way that I don't take off too much. It's giving me an option to always take more off, right? So always, I always start any guideline open first, whether it's with a guard or without a guard. And then as I close, I move towards the shorter parts of the hair. So I always go backwards in that way. You probably see me switch between a lot of different tools uh, when it comes to any kind of short, tight cuts, like again, with the different lengths of, of my tools. Certain tools I know is better for edge up. Certain tools is better for removing bulk. So just to know that you have different options because something that's really good for edging, if I use to bulk, it's gonna leave a lot of red lines in people's hair. It might be too, uh, too sharp for the scalp. So I have one for lining and then one specifically for balding. So now we are working towards our side. The back is essentially, um, the foundation is there, right? My foundation, remember I told you guys, it's like, I'm like, we are architects, right? Where we are architects and these are the, and these are the, the structures that we are building, right? Rather than just going square and be boring and just do square all the way through, I'm actually gonna go do, uh, I'm gonna just work some diagonal back in there, right here. Uh, sometimes with diagonal back, what that does is it diffuses all the harsh lines and also it's a cohesive, it's a little bit more cohesive to the direction we wanna flow. I'm gonna section, but elevate really low so I could keep a lot of that length towards our, um, our weight line, okay? What I'm gonna do by breaking the rules is I'm actually gonna technically be disconnected from the, from the back and the side, right? My side is gonna be technically disconnected but visually when I style it, when I'm cutting, remember when I cut wet, I'm working towards my end goal. What I did was create a profile line and I've basically been working up in sections, cut with wide uh, towards the center. Uh, just bending that side into uh, the top into the side even more so. Um, slightly over direct and back. This side was a lot longer. It was a lot longer on the side anyway. Uh, so I'm just kind of fixing that out. Uh, but yeah, just trying to keep and build that weight whilst keeping a bit of a square shape on the sides. 
Um, I love the texture and the curls that he's got through his hair uh, naturally, so um, I'm going to be working with that when I personalise as, as well as uh, styling, but yeah, I'm really starting to, to build a shape that I've kind of had in mind. As you get further up towards the centre line, you're probably going to run out, start running out of hair to actually cut, so now it's like millimetres. Once you've done that, you probably want to go through the middle, you might end up with a bit of a, a corner or a point. Um, not always, tends to be a little bit of a surprise, but you can kind of, yeah, there we go. Softly blend that in. Now, very repetitive, like I'm doing the exact same thing. We did a 0.5 to a one, and then from there, I use the one, and I'm smoothing clip over comb to where I can see exactly where it cuts. Still keep the guard in place, and I do more of diagonal partings. It's a little bit easier to connect. Uh, doing it this way, I feel like unless you're very conscious of like how your angles are, it can create a lot of new lines. So something that really helps me is being able to fine tune by doing it more diagonal. So now I'm just kind of going through the hair while it's wet and using my feather razor. Just to break it up a little bit, I'll use it through the top as well. Uh, the reason I like to use a feather razor on curly or wavy hair is because I don't use thin and shears so much. It just really, I feel like it really works with the curl and the wave and it doesn't break it up and disrupt it too much. Uh, we're just gonna go ahead and work on the top. I'm gonna go back to kind of my same flow here. Uh, I'm gonna work my layers back on top um, because the end result I want is something in that nature where I want the layer to flow downwards, okay? Actually, what I'm going to also do here, kind of like what Miguel m mentioned earlier, especially because this is towards the front, I can go ahead and cut, boom, right? What I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm just going to point cut it. It's going to knock two jobs. I'm going to do two, two, two jobs in, in one technique, right? I'm going to go ahead and dial in my line, but I'm also going to soften up those uh, ends, right? So I have already did a little bit of a channel cutting on the top, a little bit of the razor, and then I dried it off. I'm gonna re-wet it, but I've dried it off because I wanted to cut the fringe, get the perimeter right, um, and then also just go through and remove any extra weight through the top. Not in any kind of set method, just sporadically going through, uh, taking the weight out, not too deep. Uh, yeah, just to add a little bit of extra movement into the cut. Then I'm also gonna just like, taper out the, the side bends a little bit. Whenever I'm also doing the side areas, so in this area you see like the growth patterns are kind of going this way. Sometimes if we're going just up and down, it doesn't cut it as well. So whenever I'm going into refine, it's always working against the hair patterns. This style, I'm not gonna really do too much crazy blow drying. This is a, we're, we're gonna use the product as a setting, uh, a, a setting product, right? Overall, I'm pretty much satisfied with the haircut. I went in and I cross-checked, so my lines are kind of where I, where I need it to be. One thing I will note is um, when I worked my, my layers on the top, right? Rather than having a traveling guide like how I did on the nape, right? What I did was I actually built a concave shape here instead. So I don't want it to be super bulky right here. I want it just to be kind of soft. So when I come in and style it up and over the ear, you have all this length that will hug the side of the head, but you don't have all this crazy amount of density in the center as well, okay? Now we are connecting the top a little bit more. I'm doing this little back crown area, bringing everything back, because we already have, remember again, the starting base, so now I find that it's a little bit easier to connect because I have something to look to. And there's also a refining you can do once it's a little bit dry too, that I can go back in and refine any dark spots that I see, either with corner cutting or with texturizing shears. So I'm gonna frame the front of his hair. Uh, before we started, his hair was pretty long. So we're gonna keep most of the length. I'm just taking off about an inch. 